Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with a Witcher Netflix news update. You may notice I sound a bit under the weather, it's because I am. I recently traveled this week for an event that I can't talk about quite yet and I had to do a red eye flight on my way home. Pretty much went about 30 hours without any sleep and now I am paying the price. I am indeed sick so that's why you're not going to have the face cam or the back and forth between that and the gameplay and we're just watching Dragon Quest Builders in the background right now so I thank you for your understanding and patience and next week I will I imagine feel better but what we're talking about today is yet another Netflix Witcher interview. We're getting so close to that trailer I can feel it in my bones I cannot wait anyway we're gonna be talking about an article that was sourced from Entertainment Weekly and now we have PC gamers article which I feel condenses it properly so we're gonna be focusing on theirs that article is titled the Witcher will be a very adult show with lots of monsters and no villain very very interesting approach there let's get into the meat and potatoes of it Lauren Hisrich, showrunner of The Witcher for Netflix, recently gave an interview to Entertainment Weekly that provides a few insights into what we can expect from this version of Geralt's story. For starters, it will apparently be a very adult show, and though it won't be added for shock value, we should expect a bit of the old sex and violence. I've been rewatching dailies, and my kids aren't allowed to look at the screen anymore after one of them snuck around and saw something they shouldn't have seen, and it scared him. His rich said. She also explained that as well as some horror, there will be plenty of monsters. Geralt's a monster hunter, so from the very beginning we talked about how to show these monsters and the humans they interact with. I think people are going to be surprised by how many monsters we were able to do and how integral they are to their story. So I like the idea that it's going to be a very adult show because both the books and the games of The Witcher are adult focused entertainment material. Now when they talk about the show really lacking a villain in the title, which we'll get into a little bit more in the final paragraph of this article, and also having monsters being a major focus in how they interact with the humans in this world, it sounds like it's almost gonna not have this very coherent storyline and more so go episode to episode throughout Geralt's adventure and focus on shorter stories, which is what The Witcher is kind of known for. And I kind of like that approach there because I feel like with the games, they really thrived off having like a core villain or a core narrative goal. But if you go story to story in The Witcher, I think a lot of newcomers can get a good feel for the universe and it can also let them focus in on the finer details of their source material without stretching themselves too thin. Now let's continue on with the article. That said, there won't be a singular big bad for the show. It sounds like the first season will be taking some inspiration from the short stories that take place before the events of the novels and well before the games. There isn't really a villain, Hisrich said. One of the things we're enjoying exploring is all the shades of gray in the book. The characters you're rooting for in the beginning may not be the same characters you're rooting for in the end, and the characters you hate and seem absolutely evil are motivated by something that's really relatable and human and emotional. While these may sound like some common narrative tropes for those that critique a lot of games or entertainment material in general, nothing makes a story better than having a villain that brings you close and has you understand their motives where you start to sympathize for them. We see it time in, time out, but it takes a mastercraft to do it right. So hopefully they can do that. Like I mentioned earlier, they are indeed focusing on some of the short stories before the events of the novels, which I think is good for this style of show, I feel like maybe it's playing it a little safe, but that's also very intelligent to do so because Netflix has a history of poor adaptations and I think the safe route is sometimes the best route. I think always of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, where that was a bit of a safe play. I mean, it really was quite reminiscent of A New Hope, but it was great in my opinion. So that's instantly where my brain goes with that. The idea of not having a big bad guy is also intriguing because we see so many times where stories try to rope you in by making you hate the big bad villain or keeping this big brooding force in the shadows and make you wonder why he or she is oh so mysterious. And like I said, man, as someone who just consumes a ton of entertainment, I critique it a lot. I'm always either watching a show, reading a book or playing a game. It wears on you, man. It becomes less and less effective. So I like the approach of, hey, let's do away with villains and kind of treat it like a, what, Criminal Minds and we'll have a episode by episode villain. That could be really, really good for the show and quite interesting. I'd really like that approach, actually. So 
That has me a lot more optimistic about what we're seeing here, but it's a short article, not much to go on, and like I said, I am under the weather, so that's why these last couple of videos have been a bit shorter than what you guys have become accustomed to on the channel. Like I said, next week we should be back up to speed. I'm going to be previewing the Surge 2, I'm going to be playing some Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 in my bed this weekend and should have something out for that next week. So a lot of games coverage coming out. Sadly, could not get a review copy for anything, but it's all good. We're going to figure it out, boys and girls. So now it's my turn to pass it off to you. I'd love to hear from you all in the comments down below. Please fire away, ladies and gentlemen. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.